stand before the gates of the Lord's Labyrinth. Within these walls, the Lady of Justice doth preside. During my sanity trial, I'm still figuring out how to play my character. These are the old way. Okay. These are just basic enemies, but There we go. It's weird that the uh, the wall was a breakable thing and not the boxes in front of the door. <laughs> Oops, I have not been wearing my... Nope. Yep. I haven't been wearing my... Where is this whole time? Cesaro. Oh, the weary traveler. 
I don't know. Still don't have four link gloves. Forgot about the gloves. I am not doing any damage into the <laughs> Such resilience. Empires are forged in stone and fire. E and no four length glove. That was almost amazing. <laughs> if I had dropped as a five link, I would have lost my mind. <laughs>
Not there. Oh, I'm at five. This way. Point probably faster just to go through the next area than to try to go all the way back around just to go straight to Azaro. This one again, really? Oh, no, no, no. The other one. Taking a lot more damage this time. You are relentless. Sit down. minutes and only still only one person in the group chat any more time have to pay attention to the walls in the last place actually last two areas really
Oh, son of a bitch. Ah. Run by run by getting impatient. in the in chat now do your third pop in then a bio and up in not fighting to f stopping to fight anything point was anything that way Third spawn, so I'm gonna go bio and get back. Oh, holy Kenny. Hey, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Oh, I'm muted right now. You know, we just got the whole engine replaced on my car. I don't get it too much. Yeah. It, uh, it was having a piston slap and it's scoring the inside of the engine. So it was covered under the warranty, though. So. 
brand new engine. Hundred. We uh, we just almost had a hundred thousand miles. Wow, that's yeah, pretty good. That's good. Hopefully, all of mine's under warranty because they're they're telling me a cable was cut. Yeah, bro. So physical damage is never covered any under under any manufacturer's warranty. If you think that it's vandalism, I suggest that you open a police report. Oh no no no! It was cut because of where it is in the engine. What? What fucking car do you have? The Mitsubishi Mirage. Oh. Uh... Like it wasn't it wasn't cut by anybody. I've been having like electrical issues for like months. At first, I thought it was just an AC issue, and I brought it in to have them look at it, and they went, "Oh, well, that's under warranty. We'll order a part." It's been three months. That part hasn't even had an ETA put on it. Yeah. So, uh, I started driving it around a little more, and all of a sudden, I couldn't get it out of park. I, I like the engine would start and I couldn't move the shifter. The shifter was locked in place. So I would have to use the uh, shift unlock to unlock it so I could move the car. But even when I did that, it still didn't go into gear. So it was a useless car. And I brought it back to them saying, hey, there's something wrong with my car. Can you look at it? And now they've had it for a week and all i've been told is it looks like a cable's been cut and they haven't talked to me since i called them twice today and both times i got sent to different departments and eventually got sent to voicemail Woo. next time ask to speak with the manager immediately like as soon as the receptionist calls ask to speak with the manager if they don't give you the manager Ask to speak with the GM. If you don't get put through with the GM immediately, leave a message for the GM and it do that every day until you get an answer. It sounds like somebody fucked up when they were fixing your car. Sent it to yeah. you incomplete. And now they're trying to fix their shit. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to do. So I'm gonna do that tomorrow or I'm I'm at home all day tomorrow, so I I, I can just constantly call every five seconds. Honestly, if you have a loaner car, go in. I don't have any car. They didn't oh, give Jesus. me anything. I was borrowing my parents' car. I mean, the only reason why I was able to bring it back in is because I literally went in on a Saturday, said, hey, this is what my car is doing, and uh, uh, showed the manager a video and went, I brought it here multiple times, and it's not fixed. And they're like, oh, well, bring it, if you can get it towed here Monday, we'll look at it. And it, I got it towed there Monday. It cost me 75 bucks to get it there. And nothing. So. Yeah, it sounds like they're trying to cover something up, too. I hate car dealerships. Yeah, uh, I don't like dealing with them either. Everybody in the guild has been. Yeah, Emily got a couple of our other friends into. Emily, that was you. you. Yeah, your fault, though. Mm. All your fault in the end. Get fucked. Oh, just so you guys know, if you're raiding with us tomorrow, we are if not. Luxem okay. If you ever raid with us, if Luxem's wife ever dies for any reason, it's always Luxem's fault. That makes sense. I didn't know she raided with you guys. Yeah, she started raiding with us last year, and me and Soul were having Swap Blaster Wars. Oh, fuck. With, with <laughs> random people. And Luxem started raiding with us again and brought his wife at the time she was his fiance, and we were all in chat. And 
I forget if it was me or Soul. One of us swap blasted her and had her walk off the edge. And she screamed out, Luxem. And we all laughed. And from then on, every time we killed her, we would always be like, well, it's Luxem's fault. And then Rosu had the great idea to make a weak aura so he could warn, uh, so he could be at least warned when he was getting swap blastered. And to test it, he decided to give Alvira a swap blaster, which then brought her into the mix of swap blasting everybody. I remember when it was just blast. me and Valk. And I would just kill him. I did that, and uh, I remember doing that with uh, with milkshakes and you during uh, Legion. Was it Legion? Yeah, it was Legion. Mm -hmm. That nice little first boss that had a pool of just acid right in front of him. Swap yep. blaster, everybody back into it. But did milkshakes bring all the boys to the yard? No, at that time. Uh... Not at the time. <laughs> Every time I see him, I spit on him. In game. I just, I need you to know that. He's like AFK most of the time. I don't even know if he sees it. When he awesome might not. <laughs> He's a whore and he kind of deserves it. Without hesitation. To entertain doubt is to dance with death. What's funny is for a while he abandoned us for FF14 and then after like two raids came back. Because <laughs> he, he, he missed the, the, the witty banter. Yeah. Okay, I abandoned you guys for uh, other games. In between the. Uh, uh, with Turka. I just find it funny how Turka came back. <laughs> yep. Really? Why is it his fault you guys came back? Because he came back. I'm a bag Yep. Did he, did he really? Yep. Oh, it doesn't look like he's trading with us either. I haven't seen any of his sign up. He doesn't want to do Tuesday, Thursdays. Oh, I see, I see. I've enjoy, been enjoying the fishing in this one, though, at least. Oh my god, I'm fucking... Is not to be wasted. Why, just because it's so much easier to fish? No, it's not that. It's the random happenstance of actually getting other stuff that's pretty interesting. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I can fish up recipes and sell them on the auction house for, like, a hundred thousand. Yep, I've got a recipe up there for 75k. What kind of recipe? It's a cooking uh, recipe. I actually need it, but I'd rather sell it. Uh, I put up a dragon uh, style recipe for, I think, inscription. Oh well, yeah, I've done that too. What is a dragon style recipe? It lets you customize what your dragon riding dragons look like. And what's funny is, as we were just talking now, I fished up another one. catch an ominous con uh, out uh, in the world, you can get a mysterious bunker. 
I have a whole bunch of those on the couches. Like, you, what do you? Where do you have to bring them? Over where they go fishing. Did you say there's an item called an ominous lunge? Oh, ran into you? Yeah. Oh. Over there by that sign. Yeah, I have like twenty of them. Mm. The melody. And then if you do it enough times, you have a random happenstance of summoning a rare elite that'll yep. kick your ass if you don't ask other people to come over and help you. Yep. The giant ass frog. Uh, it, it's not always a frog. I got a giant fish once. Oh, you're lucky. I always get the damn frog. Yeah, but each totem location is supposed to have three rare elites that it's supposed to summon. At some point, we should uh, I should see if anybody on the guild wants to spend some time doing it, because I have 98. I will. Huh? I will. Oh Absolutely, yes. Um, you know, if you throw the harpoon at it, it doesn't uh, swim away. You could also fear it. I do, it is resto. Oh, oh, as a rogue, <laughs> I don't have a fear. <laughs> well, he is here. Hola, pet. Wampa! He's off the if quiet. You're talking, you're not coming through. A good thing he's not talking. Ian, what about the Yeah, you're talking. Oh, there you go. Hey, we can hear you, Wampa. Hello, everybody. We've survived plagues and we've survived time changes. Hello. It's me with the plague. Hello. So, how was the vid? Um, it sucks. It still sucks. Did your whole family get it from Thanksgiving? Like, everybody? Wampa, um, Sam didn't test her six-month-old. Her six-month-old spiked a fever Thanksgiving night. So, Lynn had it, Vinny had it, Sam had it, Kevin had it, the baby had it. Bobby didn't catch it. The cousins didn't catch it. But only the people who are immunocompromised actually got hurt from it. Many of my mom have it again now. Yeah, theirs came they back. Yep. Which is what everybody taking Paxlovid should be told is that there is a chance for it to relapse. I, I... You're dumb, buddy. They're their decisions with their health as somebody who is immunocompromised makes me both irrationally angry and hurt. <sighs> I know. I mean... Yeah, well, that, like that's we what it comes down anyway, to. But they live in North Carolina. Well, in the hospital, we're not wearing masks. Anymore. That's terrifying. Stop talking, in... please. <laughs> Technically, we're not. We're supposed to wear masks if we're doing direct patient contact, which means in the room with the patient. Maybe. Usually, my get my guide is: Are you here for fever, cough, chills? I'll put a mask on them. If you're here for, my stomach hurts because I'm an alcoholic. Eh. Wear so, now, so COVID deaths in New York it. City are up 216% right now. Uh, if that's any indication of what's coming for everybody else. It's the time, so. Why are they lower here? Uh, because New York City has more people and it's Meth more... Methamphetamines. It, that's <laughs> possible too, but... Did you guys see the, the, I don't know if it was recent, but did you see uh, the Excalibur? No. 
now and just throw it around on a knife in its head. And not allowed the internet comments like the one that killed the alligator and pulls the sword from its head in the King of Florida. It's the like Excaligator. <laughs> yeah. While that is hilarious, I know at least five Floridians that are going to try to find said <laughs> Excaligator. <laughs> And so the and so the body was joined in the hunt for the Excaligator. I, I think the sad thing about that is those five people would kill each other to see who gets to pull it out. Probably. I would want to watch that though. It's sad to watch Florida crazy. Ask Kenny. He hasn't seen it in a long time. He lives out in California now. Oh, good. He can just watch shit people shit in the street like it's fucking deadly. I've got the upstate crazies. Oh, yeah. There's a lot of meth up here. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh... Well, the, as you know, Jake, Kelly, and Mom all live in Buffalo now. Oh, God, that's right. How'd they deal with that snowstorm? Snowed. And they existed. We go when they had the I am actually taking a vacation for the first time in a long time. Oh, yeah? Where are you going? It's going to be cold. <laughs> going to Buffalo? This weekend? Uh, no, yeah. So this was not something I paid for. Uh, this is me... Uh, jumping in someone's grave, so to speak. Um, the lovely lady I am dating currently, her oh. ex-husband ex uh, bought these tickets a while ago and has no further use of them. <laughs> so I will be filling his spot. Yeah, all I have with this, I'll give you a hint. It's going to be cold. I'm going to have to bring a blanket and there's going to be lots of cheese. Wisconsin or France? <laughs> I'm gonna go and see the Green Bay Packers play on uh, Monday Night Football uh, next Monday coming up in Lambeau Field myself. Going to Lambeau, cool. Yeah, what's weird? I didn't know this. It's entirely bleachers. There's no seatbacks. It's mm. just <laughs> flat bleachers. Yeah, it sounds like Wisconsin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm flying into O'Hare. So I'm going to stop in O'Hare and try Chicago deep dish pizza so I can yeah. properly make fun of it. Yeah. Uh, you got to make sure you get Chicago deep dish pizza outside of O'Hare. Oh, no, no, no. no. I'm going to go to a place called... Um, Don't he's, you be offending my hometown. Listen, he, it's, the, it's totally fine. It's because he's a true New Yorker, and he understands I'm that going he to has some to place try it. Lou Malnati's. Which sounds like it's a secret Illuminati place. <laughs> <laughs> but might be, might be. Apparently, they're one of the good ones. I, I'll tell you, I'm from Chicago, and Deep Dish never grabbed my, uh... <laughs> I'm gonna say, it's, it's... It's like eating a loaf of bread. It's, but it's... depending on how good the bread is, that might be good. Jon Stewart had a rant that was appropriate as to what it is. Uh, it, 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 it's, it's appropriate. You're getting bored. So how's everyone else? It it it's nice to be here and with everybody. Doing well, doing well. Glad to see everybody in, or at least hear your voices. Yeah, I'm the only uh, I'm the only one that shows their face because um, I, you can't you have to read my face a little bit for this game. So did I show you guys that I? It's been a while. It's been a while that I got my in insane other D and D group sent me like the legendary version of Strahd. I showed you this, yes? 
you told me about no. it. I don't know if you showed it to me. I know you guys told you told me about it. Okay, first of all, do you remember Mr. Belinsky? Yeah, the toy man. He's that Belinsky dog. Oh, that's so cute. Those are Those fun. Are awesome. Nice. Sadly, they do not say he's no fun, he's no Blinsky, but comes with little Blinsky dolls. They really um, should. It's insane. All of the maps in tabletop version in full printed, like table sized fold out. That is nuts. Ridiculousness. That is awesome. Be cool. Damn. He's a box. No box. The only thing I can show off is my snacks. Yeah, let me get a. Uh... There's coconut in here. show off some of the more premium cool stuff. Uh, do you remember the tower card reading? Mm -hmm. The tower card. Full size, like legitimate cards. That's awesome. Uh, because this is meant for like tabletop play, all of the monsters have this sits on top of the DM screen and on the back is the monster stat blocks Ooh. for all of the monsters. That's actually really cool. Good luck to you. Uh, some random artwork that also helps kind of set the mood. There's straw at this organ. Stry playing with his organ definitely sets the mood. Yeah, uh, gates of Ravenloft and the cart. I remember going through there. Some of the artifacts that you didn't quite get as far enough to find. And then of all the stat blocks, this is the biggest stat block card that sits over the front of the screen. It's huge. And there's Strahd's stat block on the back. Ooh. Notice there's a mirror in the back. To his right. Oh. He doesn't cast a reflection. No, he does not. And then literally they give Strahd blank letterhead on decent heavy duty paper with letterhead. Oh, so you can do your own custom handouts. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, these are some real handouts already done. This one here is uh, from something you never did. Um, your God's greatest disappointment, heretic. Ah, this one you did. This is the paper version. My friends know that I have brought you to this land, my home, and I alone can release you from it. I bid you die in my castle so that we can meet the civilized surround. And they're all, some of them are distressed a little bit, you can see. Um, they're all in like decent heavy paper. Um, this is an even heavier paper and it's distressed. Um, some deeds, some maps, um, books. Uh, there's actually, if you wanted to be super fucking extra, full wine bottles from the winery that you could then put on actual wine bottles to like use as props if you wanted to be super fucking extra and, and then I think the last thing is the
And our server is set up for push to talk, so the only time you're going to hear me talking to them is when I... I don't know if the, the game screen is going to go black or what when it happens. And then a real life made out of metal and pewter version of one of the artifacts you find in the campaign, the holy symbol of Raven. On a metal chain to give to whatever character loops that item. So yeah, fancy. Yeah, there's some really cool stuff in that. Um, I wanted to kill her when uh, it was one of my players in the other campaign. Of course, they're a pair of dinks, so they have extra income. Can't wait to be a dink. Because, uh... <laughs> when you have no cats? <laughs> <laughs> no. Um... People just pay me the That's valid. Um, uh, this box is 400 Jeez. This is excessive. <laughs> you. All right, so bonus points and uh, points of inspiration for sure. Oh, there is some new rules I'd like to update you guys on. Um, new new gameplay rules are coming down the pipe. I'm only going to start implementing a couple of them that make sense that I've already used as house rules, and then others that won't really change too much about the game. Because things like enemies in the, not now but eventually in the new rule set, enemies can go through your space. Like, you can't bottleneck them. You, they can run through you. It slows them, and you still get opportunity attacks, but they can't bottleneck at a person. Um, one thing I will be implementing is the way that inspiration works. So I usually offer up a point of inspiration, which is new advantage control. Um, just for at the beginning, like being able to recount what happened last session, yada yada, that's fine. And you can always, like, if you think one of the other players did something really fucking in character and cool, you could always be like, yo, DM, give him an inspiration point for that. That was cool. Fine. However, there's now a mechanical way to get inspiration. If you roll on that one, you get an inspiration. There you go. I kind of like it. These are uh, the D and D one rule set rules. Um, D and D. Yes. In fact, D and D one says you start the day with the points of inspiration. No. <laughs> in fact, the inspirations are wiped at the beginning of the day. The nat ones will bring inspiration back, unless it's a DM given one. That's different. But uh, for me, it's a nat ones, and then my own dictation. Uh, give you a point of inspiration, so I'll try to remind you that as we go through. Sound fair? Sounds good. Okay, right. okay. Everyone got their uh, characters all, get the cobwebs out. Sure. All right, throw me all a d20 roll real quick. Did my massive four go through? You massive did. four. Mm -hmm. And one from Chris, Mary, Baker, Orion, and Sean. Did you roll Tilden save? Is that what it was? No, it's an accident. I was there. messing with my computer and uh, oh, no it worries. clicked it 
<clears throat> okay, good. Let's hope that those low rolls are uh, now out of the system because we don't need those. We don't need none of that shit. Okay, guys, welcome back to the table. Um, does anyone have enough memory to recap us from our last session? I understand if not. Uh, I remember we encountered the Cave of Goblins. We were looking through trying to find the gentleman who hired us who rode on ahead. Uh, and a friend of his. Uh, when we got into the cave, we had a conversation with the goblins. We bargained for the life of the friend, but the person who ties us all together, whose name escapes me always, uh, was not there. Uh, we chased the goblins out. Uh, we were getting ready to set up for a long rest, and two of us went to go retrieve our cart and bring it to the cave so that we could also load up any of the crates and goods that we found here to see if we can turn them for profit as well. Very good. Um, you can stop self playing inspiration up more than enough. Um, you are uh, hired by and related to Gundren Rockseeker, one of the three Rockseeker brothers who has this special assignment or project that they're working on with his brothers based mostly out of the town of Fandalen. You've now discovered, since you have tracked the goblins to their cave where there was an ambush, Dungeon and his bodyguard Sildar Hallwinter, a knight and member of the Lord's Alliance, found out that the thing he's been keeping so close to the chest is that he and his brothers discovered a map that shows the location of a place called Wave Echo Cave. They have a cave being an old mithril and cold iron mine that also housed a magical forge of spells, able to create magical items with unusual ease, enchanting them with more power and sharpness and various different effects. It was sacked a long time ago by orcs and lost to the... Uh, and, and then it was hundreds of years ago and lost to the, you know, sands of time, so to speak. Um, this is what he's been working on. They have a location and he's looking to find the mine, reopen it, and gain the right control for them. They ambushed. Gundren has been taken. Uh, they were ambushed by the Kragmaw Goblin, who seems to be under the control of someone named King Roll, who seems, of course, Sildar, to be working, um, King Roll seems to be taking orders for some unknown as the Black Spider. More than that, it is not known who or what that is. Gundren and the map both have been brought to a place called Kragmaw Castle. You do not know where that is, you just know that Sildar heard that that is where he is being brought. Um, Sildar himself has agreed to come with you, travel to Vandalen because he actually has a partial side mission as a member of the Lord's Alliance, and Fendalen is a virgin frontier town, the Lord's Alliance has invested an interest in seeing the town flourish and become established. One more step of humanity pushing the wild to the north. Uh, he had a contact named Yarno Elbrek, a human wizard who was sent to the town two months ago to just help establish order, and has not received word from him in over three ten days. Um, and so he was sent to investigate, also to follow Gundren, who the Lord's Alliance has dealing with and knows about his perspective, uh, possible windfall for the Lord's Alliance and Pendalon itself. So there's kind of multiple combined interests. Uh, you rescued Sildar, he's beaten up equipmentless, except for what little things you've found. He has some traveling clothes from some of the gear you have and some goblin short swords, um, but is well enough to travel. Uh, and I believe we are picking up the morning after a long rest. All of you can take that long rest if you haven't, where you guys are planning to head out. So we will pick up right, right as... Back. I just realized I didn't have my push to talk button push. Um...
<clears throat> Before we take that long rest, I kind of wanted to cast uh, Detect Magic and just wander through the cave uh, just to make sure, especially over in like this area by the rubbish pile, but just to make sure that there wasn't anything of magic and then uh, take the long rest. Sure, absolutely. Um, uh, casting Detect Magic. Um... I'm casting it as a ritual, so I'm going to take the time to sit down by the front of the cave to cast it and then wander. Sure, uh, that's not a problem. You come across no sources of magic that you find, not even um, some of you. Although, you know, uh, Kalarm and um, Mary kind of occasionally kick off and show some magic as they manipulate the weave or their own powers, but uh, nothing magic is in the way of items while you were here. Cool, just wanted to verify. Of course. Alright, so you may all take that long rest if you haven't done that already, and we'll pick up in the morning as you all kind of groggily come to sleep inside. Uh, I imagine you slept in the main room where Clark, the bunker leader of this band, um, kind of made camp. Um, Orion had, at last uh, we met, been sleeping <laughs> outside the river in kind of the, the bushes and brambles near the uh, entrance of the cave. I don't know if he ever made his way back inside. Ah, oh, it's morning. I think we should probably get a move on, huh? I'm still asleep under the tree outside, too. Guy, get up. Got a place to go. My bad. Let's go. Hope. Uh, what? Yes. Opening a groggy eye, Orion, you see Baker, the fire Ganassi, his kind of flaming hair and uh, I believe chainmail at this point, armor, correct? I sp yeah. Also, like uh, when when there's, there's no like real situation going on, it's like he's just like wearing kind of like normal clothes. Then he armors up anytime. Start going south. Oh, that that's right. You're the armor. I forgot. <laughs> you, it's you, morphin time. Yeah, he goes totally Tony Stark. It, I love the armor class like that. By the way, while you were uh, kind of snoozing over there, took some, shall we say, liberties with your piece there. You're gonna, you're gonna notice it's got a little more kick. I guess these these guns have been with me for a long time. And so, uh, above table, uh, so I, I'm giving you my uh, artificer thing that basically makes it that now you uh, you don't have to reload fire. You don't consume I ammo. Didn't need it, buddy. Are you giving him repeating shot? Yeah. He he doesn't need it. He oh really? He has gunslinger. He doesn't need that. Let's see. Okay. Um. It's a but, gift talent. Yeah, it's a talent specifically for his hippo. Um, I believe if you want to give him something, I think you can give him arcane shot, though. Arcane shot. Just because I know you want to manipulate his gun a bit. Yeah, I'm okay. I took that one because you told me that he, he was going to be using firearms and that that would be a yeah, good one. Oh, no, absolutely. <laughs> Let me let me just make sure I know what I'm talking about here, artificers. Uh, the infusions. Where is it? Where is it? There it is. Um, infusion. Oh, well, you you can... So here I will say this, Bob. If he gives you repeating shot, 
two things happen. One, you get a plus one to attack and damage rolls, and it counts as a magical bullet, which means werewolves, ghosts, things that resist regular damage, you're hitting them normally. Two, it doesn't use any ammunition from you. It's magically preparing itself with ammunition, so you're not actually burning oh. any of the ammo you carry. So he could still do it and it would be a value. The only thing you wouldn't be really gaining is the loading property. Actually, you wouldn't need to reload because it makes its own ammo. Yeah, I just don't need to use my own ammo. Well, yes, but remember, usually you have to get six shots and then burn a reload. You know, you had to like refill your pepper box at the end. You had to do a quick reload and burn a thing to do that. You wouldn't have to. You'd never have to do that. You could just keep shooting because <laughs> it makes its own. Hmm. Just in case you were interested in still letting him tinker with that. <laughs> so it, it would become a magic gun, a plus one gun, and you never run out of ammo. So like instead of bullets, you'd see little white streaks. <laughs> now I'm going to give you my blunder bus. <laughs> So you may continue the conversation in table with that. I just wanted to clarify for rules' sake. Well, uh, so uh, with your armor, and I guess I could trust you with my gun. And here it is, this is my blunderbuss. It's been with me for a very long time. Uh, so uh, just to uh, clarify this, uh, so uh, the way that the infusions work, I can only use. Uh, one of the same type. So, uh, if I'm going to do repeating shot, it's got to be the blender bus or the pepper box. Yeah, that's why I'm giving you my blender bus. Okay. He's, he's saying he'll use regular bullets for his gun. He's giving you his shotgun mm -hmm. to enchant. I oh, know. So, uh, like just to, you know, so we're not spending time in the morning. We can just say that that was the one that I worked on yeah. overnight. Sure. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. 100%. Hey, this was the conversation last night. So what do I do to it now? Um, so you can... It's a plus one blunderbuss? So it's plus one to attack and damage rolls. So you pl add a, it's a plus one to when you roll the hit. And when you do damage, you add another one on top of that. In fact, I think artificers can do that. Uh, I think mm -hmm. you can... Yeah. Yeah, like a, like, I, I forget, like enhanced weapon, I think it's called. Oh, that's right. I'm not the DM of this campaign, so I can't modify your things. There should be a way to modify your blunderbuss. What was what is, what was the name of the spell he cast on it? Um, it's an it's repeating shot. Repeating shot. Yeah, he basically made it. Uh, he made it one of the Mass Effect <laughs> guns that doesn't actually run on the ammo. While this is going on, what are the rest of you guys doing near the fire? Doing Sildar has kind of sat up. He's still bruised and beaten. Um. But he's found a little bit of rations from some of the supplies that are still there. Um, last night before you guys went to bed, you packed all of the rest of the uh, ration, the stuff in the carts. So one d twenty plus. What are the rest of you doing while we uh, straighten that out? I'm going to be waking up and stretching and then eating. Shoot, I die. You 
utilitarian. It's it's kind of hard tack, a little bit of um, dried fruits and some harder uh, water baby and cheddar um, that all kind of come wrapped. I mean, almost like it's like D and D lunchables of sorts. There are these packs that are made specifically for travel and portioned out uh, that happen to be sold by the coffers. So there are a couple of them that are available. Uh, mixed it with the supplies that are still edible. Edible food is fine. Sildar looks at uh, sprinkles and uh, well, yeah, that's that's who's in here with him. Um, kind of rubs the back of his head. All right, so. What's the actual plan? We're going to head towards Van Dalen and try to get our way, get our wits about us. Head towards civilization first. Then see if anyone local knows about any castles. Try to get a feed on them. Hmm. Well, we were loading boxes, and while I was wandering the cave, did I happen to stumble upon any of his gear that he's missing? None. He is wearing the basic. Um, he was wearing like really bloody tattered versions of the padding that you wear underneath the chainmail. His chainmail is gone, and his plate is gone. He has no weapons. None of his original supplies are there. In fact, he ditched his destroyed clothing and is now wearing um, just a basic set of like leathers, boots, and traveling clothes that he found in his supplies. And he has a, gob a, a twisted goblin uh, short sword just in the belt. Which Well, well, sir, you, you don't look like you're in any condition to going and fighting with us if it comes to such a thing. Maybe we should bring you uh, uh, the rest of the way to Van Dalen and um, uh, you can either uh, gear, gear up and come with us or you can stay if that's your you know, choice. But I, 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 I feel like we should be going after uh, Gundren. Well, I'm more than happy to get towards Van Dalen than I can pay you for your time and I'll get there and have some resources I should be able to as far as I understand it is a, a miner's exchange I can get some direct coinage from if what I was told is true I can pay you for it uh, that, that, that would probably be very, very helpful as we get started uh, thank you very much can, can you stand? You have claims to make. Goodbye. Sort of, yeah, but I'm not too old to <clears throat> get well. Perhaps a few days of light travel would be nice. Uh, <laughs> Don't do anything I, would. I hear there's some decent in at Fandal and Stonehill. I hear it's uh, the accommodations are nice, so that's where I'll be trying to secure lodgings first. No. And he kind of motions to multiple bruises down his ribs uh, as he kind of fixes the shirt that he's wearing. And say, so would uh, a healing spell help with any of that? Um, he's uh, he's still pretty hurt. He, he looks exhausted. Um, he looks like he was probably beaten unconscious several times. Um, it would probably perk him up a bit. Yeah. You know at least your healing magic probably fix some of those bruises and hit some of those broken bones that are underneath. Uh, you know, it's not truly miraculous. Um, they won't fix everything, but he'll be much more comfortable for sure. Alright, well as we leave the game, I will uh, give him a, a second level cure wounds just to see if I could help ease some of his uh, suffering.
Alright, so uh, did you get your one of us all figured out, buddy? Oh yeah, I'm all good now. Oh good. Okay. Got it in plus one plus one. Thanks. So after breakfast, you all make your way back outside where the oxen and the leaf hides at the park. The ox has been retied to the cart. The cart is now full of all of the Lion Shield Coster seemingly stolen supplies. As much as you can fit. There's very little behind these caves. Uh, the flies have already started to work on some of the goblin bodies. Um, Orion, you notice that down the stream by these Every two rocks, that goblin that slowly floated out is <laughs> stuck. Oh, it's kind of just stuck in the rocks. The water can trickling over it. <laughs> no, I'd like to think if I saw that, I would have that. Okay. Um, not a problem. <laughs> Orion goes and picks up the goblin and has a giant hole through its forehead where he blasts it out the back of his skull with a blunderbuss. Um, and, uh... Kind of well, I don't know. I think if I hit him with a blunderbuss, he wouldn't have a head left. He's a goblin. By hole, I mean cavity, where a head should be. Yeah, but his whole, the, like, the, top the, part of his skull is gone. It's the, it's the flower. The flower of flesh on either side. <laughs> where a skull should be between it. I would have um, at least, like, thrown him in a bush. Yeah. And it trails this kind of blackish goblin blood and into a bush. But the cart is set. Um, and you have about five miles to the trail to get back to where you know you can hook up with the Tribor Trail. And then uh, you have a bit of a ride to Fendalen itself. So who will be driving our cart? Uh, I'm not very good with animals. I'm better to be poisoned. I forgot you have that ability. I forgot I have that ability too! <laughs> oh, talking animals is so good. Are you, are you casting I'm smooth cast animals? I'm gonna cast animals. Awesome. And what does that look like for your character when she casts that spell? You know, just a little, just a little wiggity wiggity hand movement. Something little, weird. Little, little, couple of waggled fingers and some muttered and she can Okay, so I'm gonna go up to the, I think, an oxen? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There's, uh, so, two oxen. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go up to the oxen, and I'm gonna ask them if they could very politely and pleasantly take us to Fandalen. Nope, nope. Um, we, we all can eat. Yeah, we can eat. There's, there's food there, right? Mm hmm, mm hmm. Lots and of grass on the way too. Okay. Um, 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 you have the work stick on us. I do. So that means I have to do the things. Okay. All right. No. No. Come on, let's do it. Okay. And the other one responds back and forth. All right. Pull the big stick. Pull the big stick. Pull the big stick. And they they kind of. Repeat a mantra as they walk. Just you know, you just keep hearing them say, "Pull the stick, pull the stick, pull the stick," <laughs> as they as they toddle along the cart. And you hear just a mumble. Oh, the stick's heavier today. Pull the stick. Pull the stick. And they start. Trudging along. The path is a little bit off road, but it's, the trees are not super dense here. It's thickets and hills and, and whatnot to, to get back to the trail. But eventually, in about an hour or so of travel, you make it back to the spot of the original ambush on the trail. Um, and you, you know, there's a cart, you can travel by foot. You should basically arrive in Fandalen by mid-afternoon if if you go straight through that's 
was a pretty good time. There's some pretty good oxen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, each of these squares on this map is an area of five square miles. So they can cover 20 some up in a full day. So we're looking at 15. So we're looking probably arriving in the afternoon, getting close to dinner time as planned out. And if you have no diversions or problems on the way. Um, so just make me an animal handling check with advantage since you have speak with animals. How do I roll it with advantage? Um, roll it again, basically. Mm. Okay, uh, yeah, okay. there we go. <laughs> so okay. so it's with damage, holy shit. Um, so, with great ease and... How long does this spell last? Um... Ten minutes? Ten minutes, not bad. Um, it's it's always a fun spell to cast, especially traveling through woods. You can love the oaks, oxen, who constantly pull the stick. Pull the stick. Pull the stick. Uh, you occasionally will hear the insane jittering of a squirrel up in a tree. He's coming! Gotta put the nuts away! Gotta put the nuts away! So many more nuts! So many kids away! Nuts! 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 nuts. He's, he's just muttering to itself as they go through branches. Or occasionally, almost like a Doppler effect of birds mid-conversation with one another. Just going overhead and just catch part of it. Um, even, even some of the insects hear a little conversation with ants. So it's um, a lot of sensory overload and it takes you a little bit to block out the extra noise a little bit. And then eventually you feel the spell fade. Um, as just faintly you hear oh, So, uh, just make, well, if you can all make me a real quick, roll me, uh, a D20. Yeah, just give me... I'm gonna be on the right side of the box. Sure, I'm sure. looking up for, for trails that lead, like, anywhere, like, up into these woods. That mm -hmm. I'm gonna have to make right before we get to the Yeah, absolutely. Um, you're back on the Trivor Trail, which is an unpaved trail, uh, but it needs more defined wagon ruts and such. Uh, make me a... Traveling along, you keep an island trail. There is no sign of any travelers coming in the direction. Occasionally, you can see areas where you catch the hints of an old campfire, an old campground off the road, and some tops of trees. And your eyes just naturally look there, scan, make sure no one's using them still or hasn't recently. And you're just always on on the on the swivel. Uh, as I see this first thing. Um, I got a lot of sleep. Uh, <laughs> um, as the cart turns south, headed towards the rolling hills, kind of off of the trail and more towards open farmland and white and uh, plains. Uh, there's still some funny trees around. You see no signs of Bandits. The only thing that catches your ear, it catches your ear, no one else. The very faint, high pitch, just above, just some of the blowing of the wind. This is late summer. It's a nice summer breeze to pick up with. It's something just carries on the wind. Just really well. It's almost hard to tell if it's just rustling in the trees. Um, the cart trundles south. Some discussions you want to have on your cart right there. Sildar is settled 
on the cart, kind of in a, a notch uh, between two barrels, uh, just kind of sitting there and uh, looking at the goblin sword and just kind of sitting back, closing his eyes occasionally, seeming to either nap or rest. How did you get caught? You wouldn't gun. Ambush. We were uh, mid conversation, just coming between that outcropping, and uh, first thing they hit the horses. The goblins are smart enough to know the faster things going to carry us, so my horse dropped out from underneath me. Pretty soon, his was full of arrows, too. Then we were on the ground, and then they were on top of us. Weighted nets, and a couple of bugbears. Some of the nastier big types, red skin hobgoblins. They were a bit more <clears throat> thorough and aggressive. They were one of the group that took away Gundren. Nasty creatures, if you ever met them. Good luck to you. Hmm. So you two were traveling alone? Still breathing, eh? Well, we were traveling a decent peck, a decent clip, and it wasn't exactly like I was unarmored or the Gundren was completely without his own defenses. Dwarves are a hardy bunch. If you had hang them out with them long enough. Yes. They get He's an iron. important man. They got skin made of iron and steel in their bones. They're just made for it. I'll say no pushover, that's for sure. Well, listen, whether it be hubris or complacency, he was... He was itching to get going, and we walked right into it. Thing is, no one was supposed to know we were going that way anyway. Yeah, the occasional goblin. These goblins were more prepared than most. Goblins are usually hit and run if they have the advantage. And sure, there was only two of us, but they're cowards by nature, unless they have the advantage. This was more than that. Packs of goblins don't usually keep bugbears around unless they're the main leader. This is a much larger clan going on. If hobgoblins, they're the heavily armored ones. Smarter than most and military almost. They're efficient. This is a, this is a no joke clan of goblins if that's the case. They seem to at least be a uh, horde. Captured you two and split you up and didn't bring you all to the same place. They might be brutal animals, but they, if anything, are organized. We'll have to find them. Get the time down in and regroup them. Give people a lot to look for. Them. Or cave or castle you think they live in. <laughs> This is me just showing you collectively people know what some monsters are in D and D. Hoover Jubles, Goobers. Ah, goblin. Ninja goblin, knocking in samurai goblin. That's what they are. They're basically samurai goblins. Samurai goblins. Um, who just nods at you? Well, when we get to fan down, we'll it's just. Establish ourselves in lives and go from there and ask around. I'm sure someone knows, has some information. And then if I could find Yarno, he's a magic type, he might be able to scry and find you, find God before us, at least give him some idea if he's still alive. You know those wizard types. And this wizard is in Dumb Island. That's where he's supposed to be. He's a member of my association, the Lord's Alliance. He was sent ahead to kind of act as a uh, emissary, law and order, while we get this place back on its feet. The Lord's Alliance has keen interest in seeing civilization spread as far as possible. So this is a good opportunity to get in at the ground level. And then also, if we happen to find anything that comes in. I could also use my goggles here and examine them. Those certainly could. Oh! <laughs> yeah, your detect magic spell would have found his goggles. 
<laughs> and everyone else's magic items, too. I forgot about those. Oh, I figured that much. So, um, the sun begins to just curve across the sky towards the afternoon. It's late summer, so the days are still decently long. And the, uh, it's not quite twilight as you come and start to see ahead of you. The rutted track emerging from the little hillside and you catch the first glimpse of Van Down. The town itself consists of 40 or 50 simple log buildings, some built out of old field stone foundations, more old ruins, crumbling stone walls covered in ivy and briars. <clears throat> surround the newer houses and shops. And that's all, and yeah, that's act three done. Thanks anybody who has been checking out the sessions. If you've been enjoying these, appreciate doing all the YouTube stuff, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll talk to you all next time.